this video hits upon our last lifting mechanism that we haven't uh, made it our way to yet with talking about fronts and as well we'll talk about the jet stream a little bit about weather and leading us into a separate lecture about severe weather and so we have we can see our very distinct uh, front here uh, this cloud uh, and really oftentimes you can see this too um, when specifically cold fronts as we'll cover move through we can see this example are very different air masses that's causing uh, our air to rise here and condense very quickly as we'll talk about more here. So since we're talking about fronts, our song for this video is Eminence Front by The Who. So just a little review. We have our, we've talked about our Hadley cells, mid-latitude cells, and polar cells. Um, and um, we've talked about the difference between the low and high pressure between them. So again, low pressure convergence of air at the surface, so that air is rising. High pressure is where we're having convergence of our air aloft and that air is descending. So we've also seen this image before showing our kind of side view of these different cells. So again, our Hadley cells in the tropics, um, Farrell cells or mid-latitude cells. Um, and so, um, and then our polar cells. And we want to also note our jet streams are both our polar jet stream and subtropical jet stream. Mainly here in this video, we're going to just focus on the polar jet stream uh, and because it's an important arbiter of some of the weather that we have within the mid-latitudes. Um, and so the cold air masses, as we can know here, from the, uh, that come from the poles, and are generally warm air masses that are coming up from uh, equatorial and tropical regions, are where um, really we have this meeting of those uh, is where we see our polar jet stream. And really that's the dividing line between the two of these. And so um, the jet stream, um, again, is this a uh, very kind of high-speed river of air, we can almost think of it, that travels actually up, um, it's, you know, in, in several kilometers to tens of kilometers up uh, in the Earth's atmosphere above our Earth's surface. And to note that, as we can see, it kind of has these, this wavy pattern to it, and that is dynamic over time. It changes, I mean, to some extent, shifts with also the sun and where the sun is directly overhead with our insulation throughout the year. Um, but to note that as, you know, kind of, as it creates these waves and undulations and it moves about um, it, in these cases where we have kind of just like as almost think of it like a racetrack, um, it's this very high speed river of air or just like a river itself, um, as we'll come to see later in this, le in this uh, course. Um, we can see, you know, think that we're we go around a bend because we can see as I've labeled here on point X as you know the air has to slow down there to some extent as it goes around that corner just like as you're driving your car you usually can't go as fast around a corner as you can on a straightaway and so um, you know that air there um, because it's slowing down it all kind of piles up on each other uh, or, you know, the, all the air molecules um, end up piling up a lot more causing a lot denser air and that then causes that convergence again aloft and then subsequent sinking of that air you kind of see in a cross-sectional view below down here so we have our x point our air is we have very high pressure up here uh, descends down and then is pushed down to our earth's surface and with sinking there until it reaches and then starts moving of course laterally relatively at the earth's surface and kind of in a converse manner and um, we have more of these straightaway uh, areas um, we then can see uh, that's where our jet stream gets to pick up some more speed and as it speeds up it generally diverges our air kind of separates out um, and is not as dense and so that allows then uh, air from the surface to rise uh, and that's where we're getting then this low pressure that is coming up to uh, you know, again try and reach some sort of equilibrium uh, making the as, as long as the uh, pressure down here was relatively higher uh, that air uh, of course, there's relatively lower pressure up here, so we get that low pressure um, that's lifting up uh, and moving up towards the polar jet stream here. So that's uh, why we see this resulting pattern of these highs and low pressures uh, to some extent that uh, we see at Earth's surface. So we've also seen this uh, before, this image on the right here before, so just reminding ourselves of these different types of air masses um, to note that these low pressure cells that are generated from the polar front are really important in terms of creating storms uh, that are known as mid-latitude cyclones. And that's where, um, again, where our warmer and colder air, um, specifically from the south and the north, are meeting. And that brings us to our fourth lifting mechanism of frontal lifting, as we have our these, either these cold or warm fronts that we'll see. Um, and so our cold front here, 
you see with our animation, you know, it what you know, its name implies is that we can see our front of our air mass here, and behind it, it is all colder air. And so as that cold front moves forward, as we can see in our animation here, that cold or colder, denser air forces the warmer air in front of it to rise relatively abruptly. And that because that warm and, you know, especially if it's moist air, has a lot of moisture to it, um, again, as that air rises very quickly and then cools very quickly, a lot of that moisture that it was holding no longer can be held within that air. And so that's where we get uh, a lot of very uh, big pop up thunderstorms and kind of strong storms that are associated with this uh, type of lifting mechanism. So it shows here, you know, showers and thunderstorms that can occur very rapidly because of this. So um, things like heavy rain, rain, lightning, hail as well also tied to this as we'll see with our, another video on severe uh, weather. So just note our scale as well here in that on the bottom here, this is actually, um, we see, you can see this 100 kilometer scale. Um, but really, these you know, are occurring over tens to just about 100 kilometer, or, you know, low hundreds kilometers uh, values. Um, and so these are really aren't actually as spatially extensive as our warm fronts. So we can see it then uh, kind of in contrast the scale here, where we can see this is at over several hundred kilometers. And um, this is where warmer air is actually gliding up word over relatively stable and in position of cooler air. And so this gentle lifting of that warm air occurs um, is more producing of those nimbostratus or stratus clouds that we saw in a, in a prior video where um, you know because that air is lifted more gently it kind of produces a slower lighter rain oftentimes or you know precipitation could be snow if it's cold enough, of course, or rather some other form of precipitation, but just um, you know, the precipitation that is formed is relatively light uh, in comparison to our cold front, uh, where we have much more heavy precipitation tied to that. So, and this is all tied, uh, related around as well to these mid-latitude cyclones. Um, there's four stages of them kind of generating in what is called cyclogenesis, moving through open stage, occluded stage, um, where it creates the greatest amount of precipitation, um, and then kind of dissipates uh, after that. There's animations that we could also go and you, know, you can go and you know, look up if you're interested in more about lit mid latitude cyclones. I'm not going to spend too much time on talking about them here, but just to note that, um, again, you know, there's areas of low pressure because we know that the air ascends or goes into that uh, and rises. And as we can see where, you know, based on this figure here, we get these precipitation patterns right at the, kind of the, the cold front, as is shown by these uh, blue uh, uh, triangle shapes on the kind of on the front of, of our uh, weather front here. Similarly, uh, the red half circles uh, show, denote a warm front. So again, the warmer air is behind this colder air is behind the cold fronts, for example. And so, and this, we can note all this, um, where, you know, our low pressure, because that's the ascending air, it's cooling, it's connotation, that's why we're seeing a lot of our precipitation in these places. A reminder, our high pressure, because it's descending air, is warming, where that uh, relative humidity is decreasing. Usually, we're not seeing really any condensation uh, or cloud formation with that. So that's usually where, in our, especially areas of high pressure, um, we get lots of relatively sunny days, or at least no precipitation, uh, because you know that, that relative humidity is remaining or decreasing below 100%. So, um, with our our uh, mid-latitude cyclones, just to show you an example, here's an example from several years ago. Now, winter storm. That actually, I was stuck in the middle of. Um, so. Several years ago when I used to live in Michigan, I'm somewhere underneath here um, when this is occurring in the beginning of February in 2011. Um, so these storms are quite extensive in terms of their, both their size. So again, you can see this is covering over uh, 2,000 kilometers or well over 1,000 miles um, from its west to its east and kind of also north to south extent. Um, you know, 21 states here, we could see it's, um, received at least five inches of snow. Um, in Michigan, it, we definitely received a lot more than that. It broke uh, the snow record uh, for that uh, day uh, and time period of that year. Um, it, we had over two feet of snow. Um, so, well, and so, um, and you know, I definitely remember being uh, the the city that I was living in, you know, almost shut down uh, for several days, which is definitely saying something for a city that's well prepared generally to deal with snow. So this is, and these are very, very large storms. They don't necessarily have to be this big. And um, we get smaller ones more frequently. 
of course, but um, the very largest extents of these uh, can uh, create a very extensive, um, you know, very large uh, amounts of precipitation and storms um, that can um, end up very impacting uh, lots of people and, you know, in terms of damages, even uh, cost lots of money. And we'll talk about that more as well with severe weather. So just another uh, cross-section now of our mid-latitude cyclone. Once again, here's our cold front with our cold air behind it. Um, you can see then, again, this is where we're getting a lot of those cumulonimbus clouds, are very strong, heavy storms especially with that because it's lifting up that warm and oftentimes moist air. Um, but over here we have our warm front then that usually travels in front of this with the mid-latitude cyclone and is caught up to, uh, in some extent, over time by the cold air and the cold front. Um, you know, we have our warm front here that where we get more moderate and light showers with those stratus clouds um, because that air is being lifted up more gradually um, over this uh, front. So we can, we'll end here um, talking about also how to interpret uh, high and low pressure wind directions on these weather maps. So for example, we could ask, okay, we know we have our high pressure, we know that our air moves from high pressure to low pressure, for example, and so if we were to start at location E and move to location B, the question is, well, what is the wind direction at location B? Now, you to remember, and with some of our forces that we've talked about, uh, our air doesn't necessarily move in this directly straight line, um, and it's kind of bent by some of our different forces. So um, you know, our winds generally is coming out of the west here, so we know that it is a, so we know that it is, it is a westerly wind um, because of that pressure gradient force from high to low pressure. But remember that we also have that deflection to the right because of the Coriolis force. So we're really moving relatively west, but also some deflection to our right. And so really our wind is kind of coming not directly out of the west, but rather of a more northwest direction as it moves into this low pressure cell over here. Um, so there's also a link here that I provided some further extent of how to read some of these weather maps um, that you might see and the assignments and such uh, moving forward. So just make sure you take a look at this and are kind of up to recognizing how to uh, read wind direction and such from some of these weather maps.